Improvise, adapt, overcome. These are the ideals that have driven humanity forward for centuries. And yet, in this modern day, no man has dared to try to do the impossible. No man has ever thought so far outside of the box. Will society accept this man? Perhaps not. But few geniuses were actually recognized in their own time. Oh, <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech. I didn't see you there because, you know, my AirPods are in. Today we're going to try to use my AirPods with the first ever iPod, so without further ado, let's do that. Okay, perhaps AirPods with the original iPod are kind of pointless, but you know what else is pointless? My Twitter and Instagram, at 91 underscore tech, but you should go follow it anyways. I thought it would be kind of fun to see how far we could push this old iPod, and my last video did pretty well, so here we are. Going into this, I am very curious if we can actually get my AirPods to work with the original iPod, and well, by the end of the video, I guess we'll find out. But first, let's follow my thought process and... and any unnecessary purchases I made along the way. You might be thinking AirPods only work with iPhones, but this is technically not true. They're compatible with any Bluetooth capable device, which would include an Android phone or even like a Windows laptop. This means, despite the lack of iOS, you should theoretically be able to connect to this iPod, or at least you would be able to if it had Bluetooth, which of course it doesn't. I mean, it's from 2001. So no Bluetooth, but what does this iPod have? Well, we have Firewire and a headphone jack right there, and that's about it. Right off the bat, my first thought was to get a Bluetooth transmitter that uh, could plug into the iPod and be able to pair with the AirPods. Firewire to Bluetooth would be difficult and potentially impossible, so I didn't really look into that too much, and I turned to the headphone jack. Now there's actually a large market for Bluetooth transmitters using the headphone jack. In searching for one on Amazon and eBay, I needed to make make sure that I got a transmitter, not just a receiver, as a receiver is something you would plug into your headphones to get a Bluetooth signal, while a transmitter should just send out whatever audio is coming from here to, you know, Bluetooth headphones. Theoretically, the transmitter should be able to send the signal to AirPods without much issue. This might actually be easy. Now, the immediate uh, problem I noticed with all these transmitters is that they're quite big. That's something you kind of want to avoid considering this iPod's already really big, and so it's going to be kind of impractical to keep in your pocket all the time. Yes, I know I'm talking about practicality when hooking up my AirPods to this iPod, I get it. But after questioning why I was doing this in the first place, I did a little bit of looking and I found one that kind of looked promising. This one is from Tautronics. Uh, it looks really good, except it is quite big. So I continued looking and found a much smaller one. Plus, it was only seven bucks. However, I was a little bit put off by the lack of talking about transmission. It calls it a receiver multiple times in the description, despite being called the transmitter in the title, and the reviews all refer to it as a receiver. So gosh diddly darn it, I don't think that's gonna work for what we need. And it's too bad, because it was only seven bucks. So I kept looking and then found another transmitter that actually looked perfect. It was small, compact, and could bend to the side, making it pretty convenient. This was the one I want. But I still had one question. Would it actually connect to AirPods? Now this was a very intensive, involved question to make. Earlier I said that AirPods should be capable of connecting to something like this, but what do I know? I'm just some random guy on YouTube. I prepared to do some serious, in-depth research. No stone unturned, no forum ungoogled. Flexing my manly fingers, I scrolled down the page. Will this connect to Apple AirPods? Yes, sure, it can be connected to AirPods. And with that, another case was solved by the miraculous detective of 91 Tech. I went to purchase the transmitter, but then, problem, this adapter was $33.99. I don't have that kind of money. And then I realized I do have that kind of money because not only was this purchase a tax write-off, as a YouTuber, I can just stretch this video out to 10 minutes and add an extra mid-roll or something. I kid, but 34 bucks was a bit steep. I looked around a little bit more, but I do think this was the best one I found in the whole 20 minutes of searching I did. Huh, all things considered, I really do think this is going to be easier than I originally expected. However, I was quite skeptical due to the arduous process that occurred last time. So with a single raised eyebrow, I ordered the transmitter and hoped for the best. Link to the transmitter, of course, in the description. I'm not, not very good at just raising one eyebrow. It's kind of hard, honestly. But hey, I was only 34 bucks in the hole. Plus, you know, all that money it took to get the iPod working in the first place. But regardless, now all I had to do was wait for the transmitter to come in, and then hopefully I would be able to use my iPod with my AirPods. This is what Steve Jobs really envisioned when the iPod came out. So now we just have to lean back, relax, and wait for the transmitter to come in. 
So it hasn't come in yet. Um, I'm going to check back when I hopefully have it and uh, then we'll continue this video and hopefully be able to use my AirPods with the iPod. Hey, I'm back. How's it going? I finally got the transmitter. Uh, it took about five days to ship, which isn't too bad, although it was two day shipping, so we'll ignore that. But anyway, there it is. It's, uh, well, it's, 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 it's a box. There's not a whole lot to say. Uh, it does have Chinese text on it, which is a really good sign that it's high quality. The back is just completely in Chinese, which again, very high quality. So now that I've received it, we might as well pull out the transmitter. So after struggling to open the box, I managed to, and inside was the transmitter, warranty card, and a manual that I would hopefully never have to use. The transmitter itself was fairly simple. It is a little bit larger than I expected, but it's not too bad. It has two big buttons on it. One is for pairing, and one is for switching from receiver to transmitter. And on the other side of it, we just have the branding, which uh, um, ha hajibis, hajibis, something like that. On the base of it, we have the charging port, which is just basic uh, micro USB, and that's absolutely fine. I wouldn't expect USB-C from this. And of course, on the other end, we have the headphone jack itself. So here it is. Uh, it's fine, I guess. It is a little bit bigger than I expected again, but it's not too bad. So now I'm going to try to pair it with my AirPods and then just plug it into the iPod and it should work. And so that's what I went to do. I went to pair this with my AirPods and it was actually, unfortunately, a little harder than I expected. I actually had to pull the manual out again, which again was hoping not to do. Uh, and after looking at that for a while, I kind of figured it out or thought I did. The manual is in pretty broken English, unfortunately, which uh, sucks. But I eventually figured out the problem I was having is that I was in receiving mode, not transmitting mode. And you can tell because of this uh, flashing green LED here. To get it off of the green, I just had to hold down the, the second button there and it would eventually go back to blue. Uh, I can't see it, so I don't know if it... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I went to plug it into my iPod to test it and realized uh, that it was dead, so I went to charge that, and then I plugged it into my Galaxy S8 to test it on there, because, you know, the S8 has a headphone jack, unlike some newer Samsung phones. Anyways, I plugged it into the S8 and turned on the best song in the world, and it was working just fine. The audio quality was actually pretty darn good, honestly, and I was quite surprised. So I waited for my iPod to charge, which it uh, eventually did, and then I plugged it into my iPod, and surprise, surprise, it worked just fine. It actually it worked really well. I chose a song and started playing it, and uh, there was no issues whatsoever. The only thing is that the volume did seem a little bit quiet for some reason. I don't know if it's the transmitter's fault or not, but I had to have the volume near the maximum to kind of have it at an acceptable level. This actually was kind of the case on the S8 too. Um, it wasn't too high on the S8, but it was definitely up there. But other than that, it was actually working just fine. Mind you, this thing isn't perfect. It does bend, uh, like likewise, um, but it doesn't bend very far, which I kind of am a little bit unhappy with. I thought it would bend a bit further than that, kind of more like parallel. Um, it doesn't. So whichever way you toss it, this is going to be really, really inconvenient in your pocket. It's not something you want to drag around if you can avoid it. That being said, it's not unusable. This definitely could work if you really want to use AirPods with your iPod. You could probably find a better transmitter as well. Now this does also work with other newer iPod classics such as this seventh generation one. And so that's really something that would be a little bit more practical if you have one of these old iPods around and a ton of music for them. I could see wanting to use your AirPods with them and you can. So so all in all, this actually does work. Just for proof, I'll, I'll play some music from here into the microphone so you can hear it. So I've got them in, it's working pretty well. Um, you can see it playing there. So I'll take an AirPod out and put it right near the mic. I'll max the volume here. You should be able to hear that at least a little bit. Now again, this isn't practical. It's not something you should do and nor is it really something you should want to do. But if you have a newer iPod, uh, it's not completely out of the question. I would get a cheaper Bluetooth transmitter. This was not worth the almost $40. But all in all, this actually was a pretty successful experiment. There are lots of inconveniences that go with this. It's too big. You have to charge it regularly and that's gonna go for any transmitter you get. That's not something you're gonna wanna do. But then again, you do have to charge your AirPods anyways. So I guess it might not be that bad. So should you use AirPods with 
the first ever iPod? Absolutely not, but you can if you want to for some reason. Uh, and with that all being said, I'm pretty much done here. So thank you for watching the video. Do appreciate it. If you found it interesting or enjoyable, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.